Well, I got some new parts. Got a delivery today. Brand new battery cables. Single lot. Much, much bigger and thicker than what was on it before. I mean, just to give you an example. <laughs> yeah, there's no comparison between these two cables. The new ones are much, much thicker. And we got some belts. So we can install those. I got some fuel tank, fuel tank liner. We'll talk about that later. The master rebuild kit for the carburetor showed up after I'd gone and done any everything with the other one. So uh, this is just basically going on the shelf for spares. And we got new John Deere lettering for the hood and everything. So I'll be able to go and make that purdy looking. Looking forward to that. And Steiner Tractor Parts came up with a couple of oil filters for me. I'm going to use one of those here real soon. Here's something the MC Crawler didn't have. Headlights. I've got two six volt headlamps of the style that was used and we're gonna figure out how to put them on. That's way down the priority list though. But I got some parts to work with and we got some work to do. Good morning, YouTube, and welcome back to the farm. Uh, you may notice that I have a fuel tank behind me. This is my parts washer. It's got a little pump that pumps the cleaning solution through whatever it is I point the thing at. And uh, yeah, I went to Don Hart's radiator service over in Waller, Waller, Texas, and dropped off the fuel tank and dropped off the radiator. And when I got to talking to the guy about how he was gonna go and do a procedure on this to make sure that it was ready to go and put a plastic lining in, um, it sounded pretty invasive. And it was gonna cost about 450 bucks. Well, I wasn't willing to put that much money into this fuel tank since I didn't think it needed quite that dramatic a save. Because, you know, it's just got, just got some sticky crud inside of it. And, uh, but 450 bucks was a bit too rich for my blood. And I respect these guys. They restore everything from Studebakers to, you know, DeSoto's, old Packard's, Model A, Model T's. People bring them their parts to be restored. And these guys do a really good job. And they're really, you know, they care about what they do. My gas tank, I had not done this. And it's like, well, I'll give it a shot, see what happens. If I don't have any better luck than I think I'm gonna have, I'll bring it back to you. Or just buy a new one for, what, 230, 250 bucks on eBay. Well, I went and put this in here after I got home from the, the radiator shop yesterday and I use mineral spirits in this thing and the mineral spirits that were inside of it were fresh and they were clean and it was clear. Now after uh, an overnight run of the pump going into the into the filler neck here and I've moved it from one position to another position so we're getting all of the bottom but just in that amount of time it's turned this stuff so thick and cloudy you can't see uh, uh, below more than about a, one joint of your finger down into it. 
After that, your finger disappears. And it's red. So, it's definitely getting something out of this fuel tank that was there. And I figure just let it run for a couple of days and uh, much like the other carburetor parts and stuff that we did, I'll probably be in fine shape after that. So, our fuel tank got brought home and I'm doing it myself. Now, with that being said, yesterday was when I dropped it off. I got a call from Don's radiator shop, Don Hart's radiator shop, and uh, he said that it failed pressure testing. They went and flushed it, you know, got some crud out of it, and uh, went and pressure tested it, and there are solder joints along the top that are coming apart, but the little vertical fins, he, he's got seepage. So there's not any leaks, but it's enough to where it's, and then it's starting to get wet on the outside. So you know they're le it's leaking, but it's not re leaking profusely. And there's some of those vertical passageways that the water flows through that are just flat out closed and not working anymore. So he suggested that we replace it. And a new one is about 450 to 500 bucks, depending on who, who you shop around to on the internet, to buy a brand spanking new one. And uh, for him to restore it, it would have cost more than that. He, he could restore it, he could fix it for me, but it would, it would be expensive. And I'm not willing to put that much money into it, so he's gonna repair what he can, and I'm gonna get it back with no warranty which is fine because this is a non-pressurized radiator and he put it under pressure well it'll get me by for a while until I can get uh, an approval from oh, the chief executive officer of the farm checkbook to uh, spend 450 bucks on a new radiator then we won't ever have to worry about that problem again but the good news is I'll have a working radiator coming back to me the bad news is it may seep a little bit when it gets hot. That's no big deal. You're supposed to check the fluids on this thing before you, before you take it out anyway. So that's not gonna be any big deal for me. This was a big deal for me. I wanted to make sure that when I put fuel into it, I'm not gonna get grunge going through that 70 year old engine. And I picked up some of this uh, uh, fuel tank sealer. Let me grab it. This stuff comes highly recommended. Red coat fuel tank sealer. And basically, after I clean it, and then I go after it with soap and water and get rid of all the traces of petroleum stuff in there, I mean, basically where you stick your nose into it and you don't smell petroleum products anymore. Then you go and pour this in and you carefully roll it around. You don't shake it or flop it because you don't want to create air bubbles. You don't want to aerate this stuff. And you coat the entire inside of it backwards and forwards and upside down and this, that, this, that and the other. And then you go and you pour what was left back into the, deep, into the can here and then you seal it up. And then you can use it again and again and again, which is always a good idea on a farm. And uh, then the inside of this tank will be sealed. You let it sit for a day or two after that, let it cure and let it dry. And uh, it's safe for all fuels. After that, diesel, gasoline, doesn't matter. And uh, who knows, this, you know, this tank may last somebody another 50 to 70 years. Let's hope. But that's what's gonna happen to the gas tank. Well, while we've got the chance, might as well hit this with some John Deere green. one coat
it's probably difficult for y'all to see with the lighting, but the whole front of this was caked with uh, baked on grease and oil from God knows how long. And I've gone and gotten probably about 75 to 85% of it off, uh, just with some degreaser and a power washer. But there's still a lot more to go so I can clean it up a little bit. You know, that way I can see what I'm dealing with. See if there's actually any oil leaks or if it's just left over from days gone by. And we put some primer on these tracks to keep them from rusting. Uh, although I don't have to worry about that now that I've gone and done the Permatex treatment to it. But that part's coming along. I'll be doing some more tomorrow. Well, it's getting about sundown, and I've gone and chipped off a bunch of the stuff. I've gone and blown it off. I've used the tip for my compressed air to go and scrape off the remnants of the grease. And I'm basically down to the stuff that's soaked into the paint or the metal. I've gone and shot it with one more shot of that gunk gel that sticks and stays where you put it. And I'm gonna let that soak overnight I'm going to come out here first thing in the morning, I'm going to power wash it all off and let it dry. And hopefully after a few hours I can start doing the Permatex rust treatment on various parts and fix it where it won't rust again and uh, get it ready for paint. So I'm going to go ahead and wind it up here. I'm hungry. It's about dinner time. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you coming along with me as I get a few things done here on the on the farm. Come back and see us.